Well, good morning. I'm obviously not a pastor. I'm Nick Paul, if you haven't met me. Um, I'm a senior, and Pastor Leonard has let me do a senior chapel. So, this morning we start with the morning devotion that is found from the Red Hymnal. I will be reading the non bold face print, and you will be reading the bold face print. God, our Father, each day is a gift of your grace. Your mercy is our new and new morning. Shield us from harm and keep us from evil. Guide our steps by the light of your word. We pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. This right here holds a lot of value. It's the key to my family's 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. It has been in my family for 18 years now, older than me. My mom drove it around for 12 years, and my siblings drove it for 6 years, and now it's mine. This is the van, brand new, with my siblings' smiling faces there, as you see, dated 2005. But anyway, if you flip this, these keys over, you see here this tag here that says Nicholas and a Colorado license plate. I got it on our trip to Colorado when my sister was being installed at her school out there. And it was my first time ever outside of the Midwest. Many things are valuable, and it could be a parent, a sibling, a friend, a vehicle, computer, instrument, maybe a stuffed animal. I can name everything. Jesus obviously found some things valuable. Even before he started his ministry, we hear about boy Jesus in the temple, and how he stayed there after his parents had left and to talk with the teachers, and even told his parents, of course I'd be at the temple. Today's reading is from John 2, verse 13, where we will start. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went, went, into, went up to Jerusalem. Um, this here is the first Passover that happened while Jesus was in his ministry, the first of, I believe, three. In verse 14, in the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at table, exchanging money. During the Passover, it was a custom to sacrifice animals for the forgiveness of sins, and people were coming from long distances away and probably didn't make the journey with their animals, or they just didn't have any animals. And so these people were there, you know, trying to make a quick buck, selling their animals, these people to sacrifice, or, you know, exchange the money from foreign lands to uh, the Jerusalem money. <laughs> so we made a whip out of court, or, sorry, we go back to verse 15. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. We see Jesus just anger at him driving out all the sellers from this temple property. They were located in the Gentiles' courtyard, which you can see just outside the temple walls there. This is also the section that is the law in the text. It's these people trying to profit off of God and his laws of sacrifice, which, and they found that selling was what was valuable to them. And so Jesus decides they don't need to be near the temple and drives them out, clearing the temple so it can be used for its true purpose, to praise the Lord. Continue with verse 18. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. And this is where we see the gospel. Jesus said himself he would die and raise three days later. Then it goes into the future to after Jesus had died and resurrected, 
and it said that the disciples finally knew what he meant. So what we see in this section is Jesus wanting to go celebrate the Passover, then sees all these money changers in the temple, drives them out, and prophesies about himself being raised in three days. People see value all over the story, but the true reason behind Jesus' value of the temple is that the temple and now our individual churches are the way we go to learn about God and meet with Him. That is what God truly values. God wants all people to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. God truly values you and me. He sent His own Son to bear our sins on the cross and make us His treasured possession. And so I ask you, what is it you find valuable? But is it what your number one valuable thing should be? We obviously see that selling things right inside of a church for probably outrageous prices isn't a very good idea. But today you probably won't be whipped and chased out of the church. But since none of us are opening businesses and churches, we still find value in many different things in life. Maybe your phone, your job, money in general, driving, food, sleep, working out. But I'm sure many of you know who exactly should be the number one in our lives. It's God. Those temptations of other things really claw back to you. But the way I've managed to stay with God through all this is embracing Him in these habits and reminding Himself of the value of these temporary things and just reminding myself that God has eternal value in heaven. Maybe it's just having you know, a Bible app on your phone or having a cross in your car so you can look at that and say, this is for God. Maybe it's being on the Christian side of TikTok, reels or shorts, just constantly having that reminder. Maybe just having a Bible in your room, looking at it and realizing God truly loves you. We pray. Lord, every day is a gift of your grace, grace that we don't deserve. We are sinful people, but you sent your Son for us to save us from the sins we commit. We thank you for sacrificing your Son and raising him from the dead for our sins. I pray that you help us keep your number, you as number one in our hearts. Amen. We continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. We end with a blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus make us strong to do his will. May the peace of the Lord Jesus fill our lives. Amen. Any announcements?